Gunfire broke out among a crowd near Tennessee State University's homecoming celebrations, killing one person and wounding nine others, police said. A crowd that gathered earlier Saturday for homecoming events was thinning out when people in two groups near the campus began shooting at around 5 p.m., said Metro Nashville Police spokesperson Don Aaron. Shell casings indicate that gunfire was exchanged across a street, he said. Metro Nashville Police Commander Anthony McLean said the gunfire didn't appear to be directly related to university events, which had included a parade and other festivities. The football game was taking place in another part of town when the gunfire happened. A police statement on social media said a 24-year-old man died. The victims included two 12-year-olds and a 14-year-old with non-critical injuries, Aaron said. Police said that at least some of the wounded appear to have been involved in the exchange of gunfire. Police and firefighters quickly responded, some using belts as tourniquets. We are upset, we are angry about that disruption. We are angry that there were um, persons whose days were disrupted, that the innocence in this event was taken away um, and that lives were endangered. Over the past several months, the war had gradually moved deep inside Russian territory. Ukrainian strikes destroy weapons and the Kremlin's logistics, which, when damaged in the rear, stall Russia's operations on the front line. Since late summer, Ukraine has intensified its targeting of ammunition depots, which are vital for keeping Russia's guns and artillery systems firing inside Russia and in Moscow-held Ukrainian territory, according to Newsweek. In July, a law enforcement source told online newspaper The Kyiv Independent that drones had struck a large ammunition depot in the village of Sagivka in Russia's Voronezh region. The depot had stored more than 5,000 tons of ammunition, including Russian artillery and tank rounds, as well as surface-to-air missiles. In early September, Ukraine attacked an ammunition depot near the Voronezh village of Soldatskoy. The strike destroyed munitions supplied by North Korea Andriy Kovalenko, an official with Ukraine's National Security and Defense Council said at the time. In little over a week, in mid-September, Ukraine said its navy had targeted a Russian ammunition depot in the southern port city of Mariupol, followed by several other reported hits on munitions storage sites. Ukraine then said on September the 21st that it had hit a munitions depot near Tikoretsk, a town in Russia's southwestern Krasnodar region. The Tikoretsk site was one of the three largest ammunition storage bases for Russia and crucial for Moscow's logistics supporting its war effort, the Ukrainian military said. Kyiv estimated that around 2,000 tons of ammunition, including munitions provided by North Korea, were stored at the site. The general staff of Ukraine's armed forces said at the time that its SBU security service had separately attacked a Russian defense ministry ammunition depot close to Oktyabrysk, a village in the Tver region. Fire and detonation are recorded in the area of both military arsenals, the general staff said. Just days earlier, Ukraine targeted another ammunition depot in the Tver region, close to the city of Toropets. The resulting explosion at the site was equivalent to a mild earthquake, the British Defense Ministry said shortly afterward. Recently, Ukraine homed in on an ammunition depot in Russia's border Bryansk region, attacking what Kovalenko described as a storage facility for North Korean supplies in the town of Karachev. In a brief statement, Ukraine's general staff said it had hit an ammunition warehouse at an airfield in Russia's southern Adygea Republic region. Earlier, it said it had struck a depot in the Krasnodar region that was housing Iranian-designed Shahed Kamikaze drones that have long terrorized Ukrainian cities. Several of these sites, the Tikhoretsk, Toropets, and Karachev depots, have belonged to the Russia's main missile and artillery directorate. For an outgunned Ukraine, targeting these facilities has obvious benefits. Ammunition is essential for both sides in what has become a war of attrition lasting more than two and a half years, with no real end in sight. 
Close to the front lines, ammunition depots are much smaller and more dispersed, said William Freer, a research fellow in national security at the Council on Geostrategy, a UK-based think tank. For Ukraine, targeting larger ammunition depots further from the front line presents better opportunities to destroy greater amounts of Russian ammunition, Freer told Newsweek. According to a popular Telegram channel reported to be run by a former Russian military aviator, a Russian Aerospace Forces Sukhoi Su-34 fighter bomber aircraft was shot down on Saturday over Ukraine. The fighter bomber channel shared an apparent tribute to the downed Su-34 with a black and white photo of the multi-role aircraft and the caption, The Earth is the Sky, Brothers. Other pro-Moscow Telegram channels have provided additional details, claiming the aircraft was shot down approximately 50 kilometers from the front lines, and that it was a US-made F-16 fighting Falcon that downed the Russian fighter bomber. The F-16 has been a critical part of NATO's support to Ukraine, providing air defense capabilities against Russian drone and missile strikes. If confirmed, this would highlight the fighter's effectiveness against Russian aircraft, fulfilling its design mission of countering Soviet-era planes. The Russian Ministry of Defense has made no official statement about the alleged loss of the Su-34 on Saturday, nor has Ukraine's Ministry of Defense commented. Earlier this year, NATO members Belgium, Denmark, the Netherlands, and Norway pledged to provide at least 90 of the aircraft after the White House signed off on the transfer of the US-made F-16s. The first fighting Falcons from Denmark arrived in early August. That same month, the F-16s were used to counter Russian drone and missile strikes on civilian population centers and critical infrastructure. While the aircraft have largely operated far from the front lines, a fighting Falcon was lost in late August, likely due to pilot error. The F-16, which originated under the lightweight fighter program for the United States Air Force, has been produced in 138 different configurations from the prototype to its latest production models. Successive changes have seen the addition of improved cockpit technologies, enhanced avionics, sensors, and weapons, while great effort has been made to ensure the fighter is more reliable and easier to maintain and control. The latest F-16s have an increased range and payload, advanced infrared sensors, and laser targeting devices, while it has improved survivability thanks to more advanced electronic warfare sensors and sophisticated decoys. It should also be noted that the F-16 was designed to counter Soviet aircraft, and if Saturday's incident is proven to be true it has lived up to the task.